Okay, welcome to the next build and the unboxing of the uh, said bike, which I've been waiting probably eight weeks for this to arrive. Uh, it came from Bosnia. Um, then it was in Slovenia, which went on lockdown for 30 days. And so it was parked up there for most of November and it arrived today, which was sort of close to Christmas. And we're going to unbox it and see it for the first time. As you can see, there are some elements of uh, damage and some uh, some scars as it's gone through the uh, postal system of Europe. Um, but um, there we have it. Oh yeah, look at that, that's a, post, sort of a postmark of some description. But we're not gonna save the box. We're just gonna open it, see what's going on. I'm taking COVID precautions, of course. It's probably riddled with uh, coronavirus, uh, having passed through so many hands. Let's see, and I don't know what really what I bought. I mean, I, I've seen it in photographs, but the condition of it is always open to suggestion. But um, the seller seemed like a genuinely honest chap. Um, and I got it for a bit of a bargain. Um, and all the parts are in the workshop, so I'm looking forward to building this up. But the one concern is just how neon the neon has remained. And the good news is, it is neon. Not a lot of fading, I can already tell that. That is looking particularly good. I've got loads of parts to upgrade this to. I'm going for a very specific um, build, which is a neon black scheme. Well packaged. Get the zip ties out. But I think I'll get more of the detail out later. But there you go, the first reveal that this neon is in particularly special condition. And I can see there's going to be some painting to be done. But that's good because we've got the makeshift booth. You can see some here, you can see a few scratches on the paintwork, but it's all going to get cleaned up, it's all going to get taken apart, stripped, and we're going to start a new build. Okay, so here it is as it arrived from Bosnia, was its uh, original starting point, then across Europe to reach me. Um, and it's in remarkable condition. The, the big concern, as I said, was that the was that the fade had gone from the neon, but it is, I would say, as bright as it ever was when it left the showroom and I'll go through some details but first of all why is the Marin here in the garage and in the workshop well all my all my builds as you know have a as I've mentioned before have a have a story and Marin was really um I first my first introduction to mountain biking or my knowledge of mountain biking even existed was my brother returning uh, to the household with uh, clutching a Marin and a specialized um brochure that he picked up from the infamous, now infamous for my videos, Colin Armstrong Cycles in Middlesbrough. And, you know, this was a brand which no one had ever heard of. We knew about Rally. We knew about the Carrera product at, at the Halfords. We knew about, uh, well, they were really the sort of mainstay of bike builders. And these, these brands like Marin had never really been heard of and so sort of felt very specialised and very uh, unique, very premium. And yeah, and so Marin, uh, so my brother went on to purchase a Marin. He had a Bear Valley, I think the 1991 black with gold decals. I had a 91 Palisades Trail, which was, I believe, two rungs on the, on the product ladder beneath this bike, the Eldridge Grade. What's also unique about this bike is that it was never available in this colour in the UK. It only ever came with a fluoro or a coloured fork, depending on which model you had, and a grey Zoltone, Zolotone, kind of like a grey powder-coated um, main kind of, main triangle and rear triangle. And so this was never really, this was never actually um, available. But anyway, let's go with, so that's why it's in the stable. So Marion has a, definitely has a soft spot in the heart. And I have to say, this has got some remarkable, yes, there's some grit and there's some muck everywhere but that's going to have to be uh cleaned off yes there's some paint scratches and things which we can do in the makeshift booth but you know black dior dx all original black dior sorry lx um hubs black mavic rims um you know the black seal this is the original saddle which is incredible 
you can see there. But um, that's actually going to be probably changed. Um, and yeah, so it's what else is seems original on it? Look, even this sticker hasn't been hasn't shifted. Neither has that one. All the splatter and the neon is beautiful. Yeah, there's some there's some battle scars as you can see there. But you know, that's not too bad. What's going to happen to this is, other than a strip down and a clean, we're going to go for a full black and neon contrasting build. So. You, things like this may have to go. Things like this, as, as beautiful condition as they're in, they'll polish up lovely and be ready for another build. All DX components. LX, these are DX. They may be going too. This will obviously be staying. DX reads really in, in, in a lovely condition once it's cleaned up. So I'm really looking forward to it. Uh, everything, even these early DX STI shifters, with a bit of rudimentary uh, playing I've done since I got out of the box. They seem to work pretty well, in good condition. A little bit of, even some of the bolts are free from the rust and the corrosion that you sometimes see, but the, and if, if they are there, they can get changed. So I'm super looking forward to it. You may be able to tell by the excitement in my, in my voice. And uh, let's get it in the workshop. Let's get it stripped and see you shortly. All right, so we join me when the strip down is a, an hour or so in. And yes, yeah, so I thought I'd just show you some of the details and um, the good and the bad. So uh, not a lot of bad, which is good. Um, I mean, these stickers are still in incredible condition. And actually, you know, arguably underneath the sticker here is where the original neon is. And then this is obviously how it is now. And as you can see, there's not a lot of fade. That's mainly muck and grime. Um, you know, same here, you know, you kind of, where there's been stickers and then there's kind of been dust and it's about all I'm sure uh, come out with with a uh, like a, a teacup or some kind of uh, aggressive polish. I mean, a lot of muck and crud around, as expected. These will prove a little trickier, uh, and I will. Uh, I've got a touch-up paint. Um, might have to mask off and undercoat some of these parts. But you know, these original stickers still in very good condition, which is great to see. Getting a little bit of flaking. Can't be dealt out with bits of kind of uh, oxidization which is mixed up here with the dirt and again that will polish out which is great bearings are actually pretty smooth but I'll, I'll service the headset as a matter of course uh, this black stuff here by the way is just melted on um, grip that's kind of been left near some heat or something and just welded itself on but that'll come off and uh, nice wide bars actually which is unusual for this period as we know and never cut down so that's good because um, I won't be putting bar ends on as it was uh, ODI attack grips obviously de rigueur um this all works still beautifully smooth um these these decals all again original condition which is great this is a, a, a shop servicing um sticker so it wasn't original anyway so that'll that'll, that'll probably be coming off um, given it's been damaged but this is obviously still in great original condition as is this decal here um again crud around the as you'd expect here but this is more dirt than it is damage um and yeah same goes for all this this is just crud this isn't this isn't rust or anything else so yeah it's all um it's all looking good some original more original features um you know some of these were worn out worn out parts where someone's probably tried to wrench the front derailleur around and there's obviously been some oxidization and that's probably been left and then but i can sand that down and that can be that can be modified so yeah this is where we're at at this stage and um all looking pretty good nothing to worry about this is this hasn't welded itself in either that's beautifully done and i know there's a lot of love out there for the for the original saddle and it'll probably remain just because it's it looks like it's barely been sat on it's kind of incredible really that's uh that's in its state it's in this needs a service and this was loose so then i'm gonna have to get that out i actually don't have the right tools um i need a pin spanner um for the other side for those of you who are familiar with those so i need a hook spanner and a pin spanner which i'll probably get and acquire at some point uh over the next coming days and you know all these kind of ancillary parts can all be remedied i've got bolt cage bolts easy to do uh the paint will be the struggle some of these touch up parts um that will be the the bigger part of the job and then we get back to rebuilding it also you know just a little bit of re light refurbishment on the wheels as well which um but anyway uh, I won't yabber on, otherwise this will become a very long project. But yeah, that neon is really popping. It's amazing. So really looking forward to this. Okay, catch up with you okay, soon. So you join me uh, back at a at a stage where it's probably worth sharing up, an update. Um, 
So this actually, no one really, I don't think, talks about how long these things take. So I would say this is now, we're about 10 hours on from when we last spoke. So from that strip down, it's taken about nine or 10 hours. And maybe I'm not the fastest, but you know, to essentially uh, do where we've got to. So some of the um, details are, you know, for example, touching up with a black marker, some of the, some of the, some of these, which, which, which was scratched. Um, the tange oversized was also, again, so I've just, I won't go in too close um, for obvious reasons, but you know, you can start to see how you can um, quite easily uh, remedy some of the scratches and little marks you get on some of these old stickers. Completely cleaned and serviced this old rear derailleur. There was so much crud in here. It was, it was quite, it was quite fascinating how much crud had been left. I'm surprised they're still spun, but um, so that's all been done. Um, a few touch-ups marks, if you get too close, you can see um, different various paints I had. I had to sort of experiment a little bit. Um, I'm no paint frame sprayer. Um, so colour matching's been a bit tricky. Although what's been great is that I have been able to colour match, just by complete chance, um, the fork colour. It's pretty close for a 30-year-old paint to then find a new paint, which even the, even the original paint would have struggled to match. So... I think I just got lucky more than anything else. So I've masked this off and tried to do some touch-up parts, but you know, again, it's only gonna be, you know, if the bike's moving at 20 miles an hour and you're about 10 feet from it, you might not spot some of the errors of my um, painting. Obviously still got the masking tape on there. That isn't the paint finish. That would be ridiculous. Um, so yes, yeah, so that's a little better than it was. Uh, when that, and when the, when the, there'll be enough to distract the eye once the, masking comes off you'll see all the kind of splatter effect um so that that hopefully should come reasonably well better than big bits of paint uh, flaked paint missing this soul just needed a good clean around the spokes it was all just old crud and um so just degreased all that and a new uh smoke um these are you can still see the kind of releasing agent um there which is the wax so that just actually again after a couple of rides that comes off um but these are nos um tires um 1.9 uh, 1.95 lights smoke lights i do like smoke light in the retro frame because mainly because the clearance is so terrible uh in the rear triangle and and then as i said i would be also looking to bring black back uh to the uh to really contrast the fluoro so that has um, also started to happen um this is actually an xt um triple chain set the only one i could find in black but it is in great condition considering black always wears a lot quicker obviously because any scuffs show up immediately brand new dx spd pedals as would have been uh dirty good at the time and uh to much consternation i've added a flight to this mainly because i like the flights i haven't don't worry, uh, Dr. Frankenbike or the Red Dread. I have not got rid of the Marin saddle. It will probably, it will possibly make a reappearance when I ride it. But just for the, uh, just for the pure sake of showing off, uh, I like a flight on there because it just adds that sort of upgrade and that, that kind of race look to it. So yeah, that's where we're at right now. Um, I guess when you next join me, it should be pretty much built. But um, I think that's pretty much everything that I've been updating. I know people like to get updates along the way. Um, you know, I give the frame a T-cut um, just to get rid of some of the real stubborn marks. Um, I then also give it a little bit of a, a clean up, but it really didn't need much. And, um, you know, these decals were in great condition. The only one was this R on the left-hand side, which again, I managed to kind of rectify. It's still got some scratches and things in there. I'm, again, if I try and touch that up, it's gonna almost draw more attention to it, weirdly. Um, I may have touched that up in time um, when I find a better color match for it from a touch-up pen uh, what i use on the fork was obviously an aerosol um so yeah but i've i've, I've managed to use a little bit of black ink in in amongst the uh, characters there so yeah it's um it's really starting to come together exactly as i'd imagined um i did try some skin wall tires on which again but i think the the black black and the um you know the the with the fluoro mix goes pretty well so anyway Join me later when um, when this build is a little further along. And there we have it. A completed 
article and in this dusk like evening it might not look like it on camera but wow it really this neon really pops you almost don't have to have any lights not that i would suggest such uh, such a thing but uh, yeah so let's go over it let's uh, let's see what we have so i'm not gonna go too close to the fog because i did have a little go at doing some respraying touching up and it didn't really work so i'm not gonna embarrass myself by showing that off but you live and learn and that's what it's all about this process is all about learning so we have a Marion Eldridge grade 1991 European spec. Um, maybe an American spec, but this paint color was not available in the UK. Um, it would have been in the UK it would have been a gray, I think a gray frame. It was a kind of powder coated, tough, toughened, hardened, finished. And then usually each model had a fluoro or a bright colored fork and stem and bar combination. So I think the Eldridge grade in 91 was red. Pine Mountain was orange, Team was Team Issue was pink. Um, the Muirwoods actually was a full neon, very similar to this. Um, Palisades Trail was a neon green fork. Um, Bear Valley was black, I believe. But anyway, I could be wrong. Uh, much of the paint, uh, as you go back over old catalogues, you realise that your memory doesn't always serve you quite correctly. And obviously, sometimes the consecutive years model was launched at the back end of a previous year and in the shops and available so you know you know the score but anyway this the Eldridge grade was a uh, regardless of what country you're in it was an LX DX mix uh, of group set um, and so that's exactly what we have here so it's a it's one of the early actually LX and DX um, group set mixes I believe group sets were pretty um, pretty thorough and pretty full um, but actually Marin were probably one of the earlier manufacturers that started mixing up various different things. So, um, LX, um, you can see I've got the light on, it's so dim, that's gone on automatically. But uh, LX front derailleur, DX rear derailleur, uh, DX black, um, cantilever um, brakes, uh, DX um, shifters, um, as you can see here. Uh, as well and uh, it's a pretty standard Marin post it's all original um, a lot of this comes original as I mentioned earlier the original decals the original stickers are still still in place this is actually a, a service sticker from the it was from Bosnia this bike originally and um, that's a service sticker from the shop can't quite um, see the name of it but it's um, all still intact black LX hubs which again pretty pretty rare this has a these weren't the rims that came with it Regida rims I believe or Wolver rims could have been Walber rims I think would have come with it these are a Mavic rim which the previous owner had put on of course not Rockstar tires either they've long gone and uh, the smoke light is my preferred option on this gone for a black wall for completely and utterly um, black and neon spec where I can obviously things like the the these never came in full black as far as I'm aware never did the rear derailleur but um but everything else and I've, this is actually an XT um, group um, tri triple chain set. Um, I went for it because it was black. Um, the silver LX version that, that this came with originally is in immaculate condition with a good cleanup. That could always find its way back onto this bike if that chain set needs for something else. But I thought to keep the black and neon theme going, the black chain set goes pretty well. Uh, again, the original stars and stripes sticker decal. And all, all these decals actually are original. Just a few little errors. These can be touched up with a little bit of permanent marker and a keen eye. Um, and then I've added a couple of, I love these Tektro um, cantilever kind of mounts or whatever you would call those. They're really easy to set. And I did spend some time setting up these brakes and they're absolutely, um, uh, Red Dread would love it. They've got a real good clack to them. Hopefully pretty even yeah well it was working pretty even actually might need an adjust since I just took it out for its first little spin up and down the road but the brakes working particularly well on this um, and I'm really happy and just as the snow begins to come down or the hill's done I think we're gonna have to call bring this to a close but yep another build done um, really happy with it and it took a long time in coming it took a while to come from over from uh, Bosnia and make its way through the Covid induced or COVID infected uh, mail system but eventually after about 10, 10 or 11 weeks I think it was it finally arrived and I was able to make the upgrades I wanted to 
and it's looking great so super happy with this i hope you like it um subscribe hit the hit the hit the like button leave some comments uh hit the notifications as well so you can get up some updates when the next video drops but uh glad to get this one all done and dusted can't wait to get out and ride it all right till next time take care